Well, joining us now is Yasser Nak, the Liberal Member of Parliament for the riding of Ottawa Centre and one of four people vying to be the next leader of the Provincial Liberal Party. Mr. Nak, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Michael. So the, the ballots have been cast. The, yes. the results will be <laughs> unveiled next Saturday. But in the interim, how are you feeling right now? I'm feeling really good. You know, we ha we had a really good campaign. I got to travel this really beautiful, big and diverse province in multiple times. I met a lot of new people. Um, we uh, grew our party. We are over 100,000 people as members of the Ontario Liberal Party. We're the largest political party in Ontario, perhaps one of the largest in Canada um, at the moment. And thousands of people came out to vote over the weekend um, for four good candidates Everyone worked really, really hard, and now we'll know who becomes the leader. Okay, now it has been said through the course of this uh, Ontario leadership campaign, and I know you push back on it, that this was Bonnie Crombie's to lose. Uh, why do you push back on that? Well, nobody is winning uh, this leadership on the first ballot. I think that's it's really clear because it was a really competitive race, Michael. I, I think there was this perception by the media that somehow one candidate will win this uh, right away. I, I really don't see it. I think the competitive nature of it and the amount of hustle that was put in by all four candidates, initially five, now four candidates has been remarkable. All of us signed up, a lot of members in every part of, of the province. In my campaign, we signed up uh, over 31,000 people as, as, as members and they were really motivated and, and a lot of them came out to vote uh, over the weekend. But at the same time, Bonnie Crombie, she, she did lead in fundraising of the four candidates. And, and when I say lead, lead by a very large margin of everybody else. But money doesn't elect leaders, uh, people do. And in the end of the day, they are going to raise. We ran a fully funded uh, campaign. I'm really proud of the fundraising we have done up to now. Uh, money came from grassroots liberals. Uh, people give me $5, $10, $100. Um, you know, this is what it will take to build our parties, not people with big money. Uh, it's everyday Ontarians supporting our party and supporting our candidates. Um, and that was the big focus of my campaign is how uh, myself as a leader is going to transform our party, make it, make sure that we are, we're um, strong in every riding, that we are competitive in every region before the next election. Yeah, and transform our party, and for people who don't follow Ontario politics, is because you went from government to the party in third place without even official status right now. So Yeah, there's a lot of hard work ahead of us. A lot of hard work a ahead of you. What are you hearing then from the, the people who did sign up for membership? Because if you say it's the largest political party right now, what are they saying that they want to see that's not being met by the current uh, progressive Conservative Party of Doug Ford. So people are struggling in this province. I mean, I can tell you so many stories, uh, Michael, of that people have shared with me as I traveled across our province from northern Ontario to rural southwest to major urban cities like Greater Toronto area and, and Ottawa. People are struggling to find family doctors and nurses. Over two and a half million Ontarians do not have access to a family doctor, and that number is growing. Kids struggling in overcrowded classrooms. Number of kindergarten teachers I met who told them they have 35, 36, 37, four and five year olds in their, in their classrooms. Or young people working two or three jobs and still struggling to buy groceries or pay, pay rent. And so Duck Ford has really failed Ontarians and there is no plan inside to help these individuals. What people are looking from the Ontario Liberal Party is practical solutions that is going to make their lives easier to live. And that's exactly what I talked about in this campaign, is how are we going to recruit more family doctors and nurses? How are we going to make sure that internationally trained doctors and nurses get licensed as quickly as possible in Ontario so they can serve in Northern Ontario or rural Ontario? How are we going to um, bring meaningful uh, caps on class sizes so the kids can get education? How are we going to recruit uh, special education instructors so that kids with special needs can get good education. These are real tangible issues that provincial government is responsible for. Doug Ford has failed them. And here's an opportunity for Ontario Liberal Party to be its true self, which is champion practical ideas that will make people's lives easier to live. Okay, so so issues to champion, as you say, but first we need to see who wins the ballot next Saturday. But you know, you and Nate Erskine-Smith, and perhaps not surprisingly, you're both liberal members of parliament. You struck a deal. You, you, you turned to the people that you think you have support from, and you said to them, choose either one of us as your second choice. What is it about Bonnie Crombie that you're trying to block? 
Well, so uh, some, one of the big concerns about me was um, about values, right? And the reason why Nate and I found a lot of alignment during the course of this campaign is that we share a lot of those values. When it comes to how do we transform our party, what it will take to revitalize it at a grassroots level, how do we bring trust and accountability back at Queen's Park? What kind of steps we need to take when it comes to reforming lobbying, when it comes to reforming uh, how money is, is raised um, in, in Ontario? And lastly is what are those liberal values when it comes to fighting, uh, making sure healthcare is there in a public uh, sphere, public education, and fighting climate change. So there was alignment in that. I talked about my concerns um, with Mayor Crombie's political instincts, her political style and political Which uh, you would friends. describe as what? Well, I think I think issues right. Let's take Greenbelt for example. You know, initially she said that she's open to to swap, land swaps on on Greenbelt. Eventually, she changed her mind when there was a pushback. But I think it's indicative of of political instinct. I had concerns about when she said that spending money on healthcare and childcare and dental care is too left of is too left, and we need to govern from right of center. That, in my view, is not liberal values. We are a party of practical ideas that really actually focuses on helping people and making their lives easier to live. So I, you know, leadership races are about drawing contrast, making sure that we get the good vetting that we all get so people can make uh, decisions. In the end of the day, the votes have been cast. I will respect the decision that is made by the, the political parties. I'm hopeful that I'm successful. If I'm not, I'm going to be standing shoulder to shoulder with my new leader and make sure that we defeat Doug Ford in 2026. So you will be leaving federal politics then, win or lose? Well, I have, I've made that commitment. You know, I'm really concerned about the direction the province is, is, is going, and I've said my mission is to defeat Doug Ford in 2026, and in whatever role, I can help rebuild the Ontario Liberal Party and, and ensure that in 2026, we've got a progressive, principled, liberal government in Ontario. I'm going to work very hard towards that. Okay. Yes, Renakby, we are watching the results along with you. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you.